Hello and welcome to Studio 415. On today's show, you'll hear how students and administrators have handled losing teachers right before the school year started. You'll see this Charger spotlight shine on another Carroll teacher. And you'll see which musical has been selected to hit the stage this fall at CHS. All of that and more, coming up next. To just boil her up by now. Mm. What's a Hoosier? A better team. It's going to be a little bit different this year um, with um, Mr. Pearson not being here. In my department specifically, we have lost three different teachers. Welcome to Studio 415. I'm Zoe Garwood. And I'm Hudson Zom. When many Carroll High School students walked into their classroom to find a substitute teacher on August 11th, they never could have expected that their teacher was simply no longer at CHS. In my story, I look into these missing teachers, long-term substitute teachers, and their impact on the student body. Between February 2020 and May 2022, 3,000 teachers and staff members nationwide left the public school system. That's a 3% drop in the workforce. With 21 teachers retiring, relocating, or taking new positions within NACS, many students are entering the new year with a new teacher. Some students are even without their teacher. Sophomores who had English teacher Julie Gordy would learn when walking into school on day one. She was no longer teaching English 10, but instead joining the special education department. But what is the reason for so many teachers leaving? Vocational Career and Technical Education Department Chair Ryan Taylor says that the low pay for teachers and high wages for other jobs may contribute. There's just so many opportunities out there. Um, it, it's difficult to get people to come in and receive some of the low pay that they may get here when they can go to a McDonald's and make $16, $17 an hour. With so many teachers transferring departments or leaving, this has caused issues for staffing. On the first day of school, substitute teachers were employed to fill these classrooms. Substitute teachers gave textbook assignments and note packets in order for the students to still be learning and not get behind their peers. Sophomore Rebecca Kiplinger says online classwork still happens, but in a very different way. We don't have a Canvas page, so we don't have like a place where we really submit anything. and. Um, we have like this Google Drive folder that we share stuff to, but there hasn't been really anything permanent. As the year progresses, teachers are joining mid-semester to fill these empty classroom positions. One of these new teachers, Micah Belos, currently occupies a room that used to belong to business teacher Dusty Walls. One of the biggest challenges for Belos is joining CHS in the middle of the school year. It's not that I don't know the material, it's just trying to I need to have the material five days ago and I just got here. Currently, all 21 teaching positions that were empty on day one are now filled. Carroll High School students all have their permanent teachers now and hopefully these new teachers are here to stay. For Studio 415, I'm Hudson Zob. Every fall, the Carroll Fine Arts Department puts on a musical production for the public to attend. The curtain will open on November 17th through the 20th, but a familiar face will be missing backstage. Studio 415 reporter Jaina Berry joins us in the studio with this story. Directing the acting and singing of a musical as iconic as Oklahoma takes a team of teachers. When theater teacher Steve Pearson decided to leave Carroll right before the school year started, he left behind big shoes to fill. Oklahoma tells the story of a farm girl, Lori Williams, and her courtship between two rival suitors, cowboy Curly McLean and the sinister farmhand Judd Fry. With its more classical sound and large set, Oklahoma no doubt is a monster of a musical. Although choir directors Joe Duran and Eric Smead play a big part in judging auditions and assisting in the theater's shows, some students are worried about how Pearson's leave will affect Oklahoma's production. Director Jill Duran says okay. she misses Pearson, but is prepared to move forward without him. We are used to working as a team of three. Um, so this year we're, we are bringing on a new teacher, uh, but because of um, just kind of getting everything started um, and we were already in the midst of planning, um, we are actually going to be just working, um, Mr. Smead and myself, and splitting um, all of the um, staging requirements and everything ourselves. Although Duran, Smead, and the new theater director will all be at the helm of all future productions, most students auditioning are sad about Pearson's departure. Senior Trinity McFarland explains what she misses about Pearson and what he brought to the table. 
Without his like magical touch, I feel like it's just gonna be like, mm. Mr. Pearson has like a sarcastic, dry kind of humor. I really like that about him. Um, so I guess it's that, but like you can't really make another Mr. Pearson. Written in 1943 by Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein, Oklahoma is one of the oldest ongoing musicals to exist. Junior Caleb Cox says he was surprised when he heard that the theater department was doing a musical as classic as Oklahoma. I was pretty excited um, and a little surprised just because um, previously all the shows they've been doing have been like movies that were popular like Shrek, Ghosts, Mary Poppins, and Elf, except for Spelling Bee, that was not. Um, but this year it's more of like a classical older show, which I was surprised by, but I'm excited about it to say, possibly sing like the old score. If you would like to come see this musical, Oklahoma will hit the stage in mid-November. For Studio 415, I'm Jenna Berry. Studio 415 reporter Will Jameson is continuing his interview series this year by inviting guests into the studio and asking them fun and serious questions. In this week's Charger Spotlight, Will finds out why Helen Brubaker punched another student when she was a student at CHS. Welcome back to the Charger Spotlight, and on today's episode, we're interviewing your freshman English teacher, Ms. Brubaker, to ask her some questions about her personal life. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Brubaker. It's awesome to be here. Quite an honor, I Thank must you. say. So, do you think English should be taught in every single country? <laughs> you know, I hadn't really thought about that, but yes, of course it should. Okay, okay. Uh, how many years have you been an English teacher in the freshman center? Uh, on the freshman side, I think we're on 20 okay. Ness. That's a lot. It's not too many, but Not it's a too good many. Amount. Got a few more good, I think I still have a few more good years left. Yeah. How have the Boilermakers been doing lately? You know, actually, my daughter has a visit today on campus coming okay. up here, so we also went over the summer. I'd say they're doing quite well. Okay. Andrew, uh, could you come in here, please? How does that make you feel? Uh, you know, I don't know if I should just keep talking or just say, what's going on here? I know I didn't have you in class, mm -hmm. but I thought you would have learned to just boil her up by now. Mm. What's a Hoosier? A better team. What are your favorite slang words? Um, sus. Do you have anything to say, Andrew? No. What animals do you raise on your farm? Oh, we have uh, shorthorn cattle and we have several kinds of goats. Okay. So we have Toggenberg goats and boar goats. Amazing. Do you need a goat? I'm okay, thank okay, you. Okay, they're great lawn mowers. Before I ask you the question, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, Seth Lehman. Leader? Gentleman, an academic scholar. Those are the words that describe Seth Lehman. He represents all things that matter to the school and its students. He has never asked anyone for help until now. He needs you, Chargers. Nominate Seth Lehman for homecoming royalty. I'm Seth Lehman. I approve this message. Do you think you would vote for Seth for homecoming king? You know, I don't know that I had Seth in class, okay. so I'm pretty loyal to, you know, my Brew Bakerians, mm -hmm. uh, my former students. I don't okay. know if any of them are running or not or... Okay or if they, or who is even on. Uh, Seth Lehman, do you rule by fear? Um, not usually. Uh, I, I usually just rule by um, my good looks and the brew bun and okay. just my outfits alone. When I walk in, that's enough. All right. So can you explain this photo to me? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, yes I can. That was 1995, a great year. I still think I look the same, oh, pretty yeah. close. Uh, when my students find this photo, I always ask if I look better now or then, and they're very intelligent, and they say now. Mm -hmm. um, what would you like to know? Did second place hurt? Because it you says know, salutatorian. You know, uh, that's what my dad always said, that second is the first loser. But I have to say, there was only 246 in my class at okay. this time, and so I was still pretty cool with coming in second in my class, well yes. Done. Well yeah, done. thank you. <laughs> is it true that's you great. may or may not have punched a student in high school? Ooh. Probably true. Okay. I have a few nicknames from okay. high school, uh, Bruno being one of them, and I played basketball. So right. there was a few barn ball basketball games that happened uh, in, our, in our farm. So okay. yeah, um, we should we should play basketball one on one sometime or, or knock out. I'm not good at basketball. You're not. Mm. Well, we play tennis. At least you're good at this job. Thank you very yeah, much. You're I appreciate welcome. that. You're welcome. Are you fond of the rapper Nardo Wick? Hmm. Well, why don't you sing a little ditty from him, and I'll let you know if I'm fond of him. Uh. 
I actually don't know many of his songs, I'm not going to lie. Oh, you know what? I am more familiar with uh, country, maybe okay. some Christian artists. So he wasn't on my radar, but if you want me to check him okay. out, no, I, okay. I might Google him. You're okay. Would I be comfortable listening to him with my grandma Probably present? Not, no. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you still sing the Carol High School anthem every single day or every Friday? I every Friday, so. yes. I'm tr I'm teaching the new the, the new freshmen, the newbies. It's very They're important. coming along, um, and I would suspect with as many students as we have in the stands in the Neon Nation that I should hear more voice and less clapping. Do you think everyone should join the student council if they can? Oh yeah, student council. I've done that for a few years mm -hmm. as well. It's a good it's a good leadership position um, and lets you be involved in the school. Okay. Absolutely. Would you like to say anything, Andrew? Freshman, you represent. Freshman. I'm not running for student council. You're not? No. Oh. All right, well, I think that's all. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you for coming. You heard it here first. Helen Brubaker loves Purdue, and she may or may not have punched a student in high school. For Studio 415, I'm William Jameson. If students are looking for locally grown produce, scenic views, and fun activities, Fort Wayne has many beautiful parks that are open to the public. Studio 415 reporter Lennon Ormerson joins us in the studio and has more about what one park has to offer. Thank you. In 1871, the Sullen family established their farm. Then in 1995, the family gifted their farm to the Fort Wayne Parks and Recreation Department. Today, the farm is home to a beautiful array of wildlife and family-friendly activities. The 170-acre Sullen Farm Park is home to a wide variety of animals and vegetation. During the summer months, park guests are free to visit the donkeys, sheep, goats, chickens, pigs, and more. The abundance of natural resources at the farm also encourages a variety of birds, deer, and other wildlife in the park. Each summer, the garden is full of fruits and vegetables, such as blackberries and tomatoes that are cultivated without the use of synthetic fertilizers or pesticides. Solomon has activities for guests of all ages. The famed Farm and Fun Day Camp begins in June each year and consists of six weekly sessions for children to learn about life on the farm. The Farmer's Market, held every Wednesday through September, showcases locally grown produce and handmade items. In late September, the Fall Harvest Festival has hayrides, music, and fall activities that ensure a fun experience for the entire family. One of Solomon's most popular activities is the Yupik Flower Field, where guests can rent equipment and cut their own arrangements. CHS senior Kendall Gregory believes that visiting the Yupik Flower Field is a great way to decompress. I just think that now we're just all caught up in our technology and what we're doing in our life. Like for me at the time it was soccer tryouts, so like it was just so nice to just be able to walk along and they let us do really whatever we wanted. So just to pick a flower when I saw one that I liked and it's just a really stress-free environment. The farm is brought to life through a diverse group of volunteers. Whether it be the adult volunteers who tend to the garden each summer, or counselors helping out children at the Farm and Fun Day Camp, the park is built on the efforts of an entire community. CHS freshman Lila Ward says that participating in the Farm and Fun Day Camp has a positive impact in her life. Oh, it's always a highlight of my summer. You know, I meet so many new people from all over. Uh, we do all sorts of different games and even learn how to take care of the animals, which is really cool. Ward also encourages her fellow classmates to get involved, whether that be at Salmon Farm or any other volunteering opportunity. Oh, I would say definitely go for it. I mean, personally, I've never had a negative experience with it, so I say might as well try it. Salmon Farm is always searching for volunteers. If you're interested in volunteering, call 260-427-6008. Also, if you're interested in upcoming events, check out their social media accounts. For Studio 415, I'm Lennon Ormiston. While many clubs continue to meet during activity period, one club is meeting both on and outside the school grounds with a special purpose. Studio 415 reporter Alex Galendez reveals what this club is and what it is doing to bring in Carol Chargers and even kids outside CHS. After a long absence from CHS, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Club is making its return this year. In my story, I reveal the motives behind the club and its leaders' greater goals. The FCA, short for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, is an international organization founded in 1954 with the goal of combining athletics with Christianity. Fort Wayne is served by the Northeast Indiana Chapter, one of hundreds spanning 107 nations. Over the last 25 years, the club has been open to any CHS students to pursue their faith and has been led by FCA sponsor and PE teacher Steve Lubihusen for the past 14 years. In years past, the club usually met during activity period before eventually switching to Tuesday mornings. However, like all other clubs at CHS, the COVID-19 pandemic forced the FCA's hand and the club had to shut down operations. During the pandemic, student leaders decided to meet Thursday nights at different members' households, continuing to do so to this day. 
Lubihusen says that the student leaders decided to bring the club back to Carroll to get more students involved. They wanted to have an opportunity to meet here on school grounds with students who couldn't possibly make it to the Thursday night groups. And so they wanted to do a, a combination of Thursday nights plus in the mornings before school on Tuesdays. Along with inviting and encouraging students, club leaders also make time to meet and discuss different events and topics. While leaders do occasionally meet with Luby Husen and co-sponsor, social studies teacher and cross-country coach David Brooks, they mostly rely on each other and discuss all upcoming plans ranging from sermons to different activities in the area. But even that has its challenges. While leaders often meet outside of school, a club for FCA leaders was offered on B rotation. But since it was open to the whole school, any student had the ability to sign up and join the club even if they were not a leader themselves. Brooks feels that the number of leaders needed to keep the club running was the reason for the club's ultimate demise. The reason we pulled the plug on that during club time is if it's going to be leaders, then there's going to be you know, a minimum of 18 of them or whatever it is. That's not necessary. And two, we don't want to, by the flip side, while we don't want to put a bare minimum on the number of leaders, we don't want to put a cap on the number of people that can attend. So that's part of the reason we pulled that from the, the official rotation. But even with the shortcomings during school hours, the club is still open to all students, especially Thursday nights where students can meet new club members and strengthen bonds through icebreaker challenges and competitive games. Regardless of the day, members all gather to hear uplifting messages composed by their own, professing both their shared faith and their commitment to their community. Leader Janae Byman believes that this arrangement enriches her understanding of her fellow classmates. I feel like it's easier to learn from your peers because it's at your mentality of, oh, okay, if they understand it, I can understand it. And it's a lot easier to ask questions to people that are your age, I feel. While leaders consistently make plans for upcoming meetings, they ultimately keep moving forward because of their dedication and mutual support. Through the sponsorship of Lubihusen and Brooks, many students, notably juniors and seniors, are compelled to go out and be leaders for all those around them. What began as a small group of students has evolved into over a dozen juniors and seniors leading independently, a decision made by former member Joel Byman, brother of Janae, as they take time and effort to carry on the legacy of all those before them. When asked about their hopes and encouragement for this school year, Lubihusen, Brooks, and Byman all had positive outlooks. It's fun to see them grow and develop, develop into those leaders, um, and they kind of take it on themselves. It's, it's awesome. My hope is that it's a place where there's some fellowship and some encouragement, and students look forward to every other Tuesday. My hope for this year, uh, even on a personal level, is that by the end, because I'm a senior, so by the end of the year, I can leave my school knowing that I did the best I could for the kingdom of God in my school. While the club will not meet during activity period, it will continue to meet every other Tuesday morning at 7.30 a.m. and every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. If you're interested in joining the club or plan to become a leader, Byman and the current FCA leaders are available for questions at any time. You can also follow their Instagram page at Fort Wayne FCA for event details. For Studio 415, I'm Alex Galindez. Various new stores have opened up in Fort Wayne in the past decade, and some of these places have, have risen to fame fast. Ted's Market being one instance. Ted's Market, better known as Ted's Beer Hall, opened their doors in 2015, but it wasn't a success like they hoped. Studio 415 reporter Cohen Sustorf has the story. Ted's Market, better known as Ted's Beer Hall, opened their doors in 2015, but it wasn't a success like they hoped. Owner Brian Hench purchased this location, which was originally a church, located at 12628 Coldwater Road. Soon after, Ted's Market opened as an organic grocery store. Unfortunately, a grocery store didn't work out too well for business at Ted's. Even after failing twice, Brian didn't give up his dream. In 2017, Ted's opened back up better than ever with the idea of a German-style beer hall. Ted's was blooming. When we first started, we actually had three, I believe, three long tables, and that was pretty much it in the entire restaurant um, that ran the entire length of the restaurant. Um, that was a little chaotic, and so fortunately we decided that it was probably better to break those tables up into uh, smaller, more normal sized tables, which helped us out when we got to COVID and we could only sit uh, one person for every other table. Um, and so that uh, having, having a large table at that point would have been very, very challenging. After the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, Ted's had to change its beer hall style to fit social distancing rules. This hurt the business and sparked a new idea, Food Truck Thursday. Because of the restrictions from COVID, they couldn't have much business inside, so Brian and his crew decided to bring it outside. 
Hench has had some assistance during the Ted's Beer Hall rise. General Manager Eric Ehlers has been right by his side during this whole process. Ehlers has been with Ted's for almost three years now, just being hired back in 2020. A lot has changed since then. Back during 2020, Ehlers said he was stopping in every other week to sell product to them. And um, it, it has changed so much just from, I was in here once a week just doing sales stops for like two years and then to start working here two years ago and be like, it's so wild how much different it is. Ehlers believes that Ted's is a great place to have a nice sit down dinner with the family or go enjoy some trivia. With summer coming to a close, you might want to stop by Ted's Market for their final food truck Thursdays of the year. We're hiring. <laughs> We're hiring. We'll take high school students. We need dish, we need runners, we need bussers, all that. If you're looking for something to do on a Thursday night, come and stop by Ted's extensive line of food trucks. If you want to apply online, go to teds-market.com. For Studio 415, I'm Cohen Sestorf. Entering the school year, Carol has seen many staff come and go. The math department alone has had its fair share of new faces. Studio 415 reporter Andrew Furman looked into some of the unfamiliar hires to bring the story of one of the new teachers. In the math department alone, Carol has gained three new faces for the 2022 through 2023 school year. On the 10-12 side, students passing classroom 212 might catch a glance of Nick Nodine. Algebra 1 and 2 teacher. Nodine joined Carol at the end of last school year, graduating from Tryon University. Nodine has always had a love for math. Teaching students has always been a passion for him, even during his teen years. Carol's students probably works a lot harder than, than most other schools. So I don't know how you guys do that or not how you get it drilled in yourself to, to work hard and do well. Nodine noted that so far in his time at Carroll, his experience and transition into the new position have been smooth due to the support that he has received. Going into the year, he hopes to educate and bring purpose to inform those enrolled in both Algebra 1 and 2. He feels that a laid-back, extroverted teaching style is the best for students' learning experience. Nodine feels that all types of math is important, even if not everything is used modern day. Like me, when I think back to high school math and stuff, yeah, I don't use everything I learned, but it made the, um, the easier things easier because I knew how to do the harder things. During his high school days, Nodine took interest in activities like band, baseball, and bowling. He hopes to get involved with some of those activities in the community, wanting to share his knowledge in those areas. As the school year goes on, make sure to stop by room 212 to get to know Mr. Nodine a little bit better and for any additional math help. For Studio 415, I'm Andrew Furman. That's all we have today. Thanks for watching. If there's a story you would like us to cover, please let us know. For all of us here at Studio 415, have a great week, Carol.